Why do I obsess so much about my ex with narcissism and borderline? Do you find yourself stuck in a mental loop of obsession? Do you struggle to concentrate at work because you're thinking about your ex, for instance? Or when you're with friends, do you find that your mind is drifting somewhere else while you should be concentrating on the conversations? Do you find yourself often not present in the moment? That is perfectly normal. Let me explain why. You're coming out of a crazy relationship and crazy is probably an understatement. In fact, you're coming out of months, years of absolute madness, total chaos and destruction one could describe it. Your mind is trying to understand what has happened over this period and so much has happened. A relationship with a narcissist and a borderline is intense. 100 times far more intense than a quote-unquote normal relationship. One month with a narcissist or with a borderline is like one year with someone else. And that is also what makes them quite attractive, to be honest. Many people who date a borderline and a narcissist kind of describe it as if you're going back to those teenager relationships when you're, you know, 16, 17, 18 in high school where everything seems novel, everything is fun and exciting. But the flip side of that fun and excitement is that everything is dramatic, everything is intense. Emotional regulation is basically non-existent. And that's similar to how teenagers are, in fact, still fully developing. So it's quite normal to hear, oh, my relationship just reminds me of my, my high school relationships. So, so it takes time uh, to, to process this, uh, this relationship because there simply is so much to, to digest. In fact, it's a bit like your stomach. You know, if it's simple food, it's going to digest quickly. You're going to break it up. You're going to absorb it quickly. If you're going to have a huge, complex, big meal with a lot of different kinds of foods, it's going to take your stomach much longer time to process it. And it's very similar when what happens once you break up or you're broken up with a narcissist or a borderline. It takes a lot of time to process all the stuff that has happened, all that information. Second, any normal person would struggle to understand this kind of relationship. So if you're coming out of a BPD and an MPD relationship and you are quote unquote normal, you're going to try to apply this way of thinking, this normal way of thinking to an abnormal relationship. You will spend hours and hours reflecting and thinking about, you know, oh, why did they do this? Oh, I will never cheat on the person I love. How can they love me and then one minute later tell me or treat me horribly and so forth? And we can think about thousands of examples. You can probably think of thousands of examples of yourself thinking along these lines. So what you're doing here is you're trying to apply a normal way of thinking you know, like a normal relationship of two loving people that respect and love each other to an abnormal relationship, to an abnormal person. You're trying to understand their behaviors with your own language. And that just doesn't work because they are not particularly normal, if we can say, you know, so, so it doesn't work. You, you're speaking two different languages, you know, and you're sitting there obsessing about, you know, why did they do this? Why did they do that? And you'll never be able to understand because they are on another planet in the way that they think compared to you. Third point is also that it's very usually not a very clean break and that complicates matters. Sometimes it can be and both parties go their own way, but many, many times it's not. At the very least, I would say that it's a breakup that will not give you a lot of closure. If you broke up with them or if they discarded you, you won't really get uh, the closure that you need. If you broke up with them, for instance, you will not see a proper genuine, genuine apology or a realization of wrongdoing, let's say, uh, for everything that has happened in the relationship that brought you to take this decision. And if they broke up with you and said that will also mess with your head and they most certainly won't be able to explain why a second before or, you know, two days before or the day before or the week before they loved you so intensely. So it's really going to mess up with your head, the, the, the breakup. They're generally uh, very messy. Feelings get hurt. Bad things are said usually during these breakups and no closure is provided. 
Generally speaking, all kinds of relationships, breakups are very difficult, but the ones with a BPD and an MPD are particularly difficult because like everything else in the relationship, also the breakup is not going to be a particularly peaceful or normal breakup. So what I want to say is also that some degree of obsession is normal, and but, but what you really need to try to do is to never allow yourself to focus on the positives too much. Some, some degree of obsession is normal in all kinds of breakups, you know, not only when you're breaking up with a BPD and an MPD, it takes, it takes time, you have a lot to think about. But what you need to be very cautious about is uh, falling into the trap of thinking the positive thoughts. Because this was an abusive relationship. If you dated a BPD and an MPD, it's inevitably going to be an abusive relationship. So you should be extremely cautious about focusing too much on the positives. You can recognize that there are some positives. I'm not saying that you should be totally black and white. But the moment you start focusing on the positives, you start missing them because of the positives, you need to stop yourself. And this will happen because you will sometimes be sitting at home and you will think something like this, you know, something like, oh, it was so nice when we went on that beach trip together to, you know, the south of France or wherever you went. We were so in love. We were so passionate with each other. You know, I was thinking we would do this for the rest of our lives one day also with children or, or whatever else. I wish I could go back to that. Why can't I go back to that? It was so fantastic, you know, and these are the things you need to be very cautious about because it's very easy to find such examples because if it was a horrible relationship all of the time, then you would have not have stayed for as long as you stayed with the BPD or the MPD, you know, so there's going to be a lot of very positive moments with the BPD and the MPD. The highs are going to be very high, but you also need to remember that the lows are going to be very low. So, Remember the ugly and really embrace the ugly and realize that the highs are just an illusion. And if you think about it, they were actually quite rare. If you if you think about overall in however long you've dated, you know, six months, one year, two years, how many really, really positive moments were there compared to how many negative moments there were? And you'll find that the balance is not a healthy balance, that there's going to be a lot on negative moments and these positive moments that you have your hopes on are basically what keep you hooked and what kept you hooked into an abusive relationship so you should look at the positive moments as part of the abuse cycle the fifth point is my, my final point here is that you should not be so tough on yourself it can be very frustrating to go through this it can be very frustrating when you're thinking you know rationally i know that this person is not good for me i know emotionally they are not good for me. All of my friends, all of my family says the same. Everyone around me is giving me validation, but I still miss them and I still struggle to get past it. So don't, oh, what I'm saying here is don't overly um, punish yourself for taking so long and for continuing to obsess over them because of the reasons I explained earlier, because it's such a complex relationship to digest. So give yourself time Give yourself time to grieve the relationship and also try to understand exactly what happened. And with time, it will be better. And many, many people have recovered from these relationships.